There's mental health. I think there's a cultural advantage to travelling. All of this is at risk now. There's a cultural advantage, educational advantage, of course. But the, the big problem was that the air, airlines and, of course, uh, airports laid off so many staff during COVID for understandable reasons. Yeah, Nobody was flying. Of course. Um, but they were paying way under the odds. I think this is where I have some slight, slight sympathy, maybe the only time you'll ever hear me say this, with the trade unions. Because yeah. those people do work vile hours. Yes. Um, are often very far from their families uh, and, you know, who'd want to do that? If you're going to pay them reasonably, that's fine. And I think if, if the unions do manage to, uh, in this instance, bargain for better pay and for better conditions for staff, uh, both within airlines and at airports, then there's no reason they shouldn't be flying during the night. Because people do need to get away. It's been... For many people, they, they won't have had a holiday since summer 2019. Yeah, that's, that's three right. years. Three years of the same skies and of the mm. same sights over and over again. You know, yeah. All work, all play it makes Jack, Jack a very unhappy boy. Yeah. And I, I just don't think it's very reasonable. If the unions are blocking it uh, prima facie, I don't think it's very reasonable of them. If they're saying, you know, look, you need to improve conditions, then that's another matter. I, I wonder whether it's the dreaded C word as well, David, COVID, that... You know, people, we're still in an era where if someone gets a positive test for COVID, mm -hmm. they self-isolate mm. for a week or two. Yeah. Mm. Uh, whereas actually back in the day, if you got the flu, once you felt better, you yeah. went yeah. back to work. Yeah. It does surprise me quite how many people are still going on with the theatre of this. It's almost as though they can't now bear to let it go. It's like Stockholm Syndrome. They've been involved with it for so long, it's become such a part of their mental furniture that the idea of not having to test, the idea that if you had it, you might just you know, spend a couple of days at home and then get on with life as usual. It's, it's this curious thing that people can't seem to drag themselves away from the COVID theatre. Well, yes, including quite high-profile TV presenters that mm. do viral videos about how they're at death's door, yep. they're receiving the last rites, yep. A day later, they're doing TikTok dance videos yeah, yeah. back in the studio by Friday. Yeah. You can and if, make it up, Janelle. And if you're one of these people with a nervous disposition, are you going to want to get on a very small aeroplane with a great many people and lots of recycled mm. air? Probably not. No. But this, it's about time that people in positions of power and influence within the travel industry well, said travel is that, safe. Isn't that the point, Ian, which is mm -hmm. that, you know, obviously, if you feel nervous about it, stay home. Yes. But please let the rest of us yeah, cool. get on with our lives, including older people yeah. who have been locked up for two years, exactly. many against their will, who do want to travel and yes. don't want to be in a bubble for the rest of their no. lives. No, no. no. And, uh, as you see, old people like ourselves, 75 years old. Oh, stop it, look at you. <laughs> We've had four vaccines, so I'm perfectly happy to go anywhere. Yeah. You